and suddenly you've got a lockdown that is in place because nobody can afford to go anywhere or drive the cars that they've been legislated out of. Good afternoon, I'm afraid all the nice cars have now left. There was a Porsche here earlier, but you'll have to watch my other video for that one. I've got some absolutely reprehensible behavior that I need to tell you about. Some people are being very naughty and I do not condone this behavior. This is brilliant. Man gifts Sadiq Khan his old car ingenious ULES loophole to try and avoid the £12.50 charge. This has been all over social media in the last 24 hours. A London man has said he's gifted his ULES. I'm going to move to a better place where I've got a better car behind me. Hang on a minute. Can't. I am brave, rubbish. Can't really find anywhere to park, so you'll have to do with uh, an electric Volvo. Right, a London man said he has gifted his ULES non-compliant car to the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, in an attempt to avoid the daily £12.50 fee amid the expansion of the ULES zone. Popov's La says he owns a 2002 Ford Focus, which is too old to meet the Transport for London rules, and so he's come up with a loophole. He says he considered scrapping the vehicle, but decided against it as it's still drivable. Fair enough, I'm with you on that one. Instead, he claims to have registered Mr. Khan as its new owner and posted the logbook to TfL's head office, making the mayor the car's registered keeper. He posted on Facebook earlier this week, I've got 2002 Ford Focus, it's non-compliant. I considered scrapping it, but I've decided to give the car to the mayor. One person commented, genius. And a different user said, brilliant idea, we should all do this. So he's registered his car to Sadiq Khan, and I guess in that way, Sadiq Khan sort of gives him permission to keep driving around in it. So what you do is you get your old car, you fill in the logbook, you can do it online these days, it's really easy. You transfer ownership to Sadiq Khan online, and then you tax the car on the new keeper supplement so it's still taxed. You can then insure the vehicle, and when you insure it, they'll say, are you the owner and registered keeper? You just say, no, actually, it's owned and registered to the Mayor of London. And they'll say, yep, no problem. You might pay a slightly higher premium for it. You're paying the road tax, but every single ULES fine and parking charge and even speeding fine will end up going to Sadiq Khan up until the point where he comes around and says, you know that car you gifted to me? Um, I don't think he'd be phoning. I think he'd be out the door. He'd come around and say, that car you gifted to me, can I have it now, please? And you go, yeah, sure, you're the owner. No problem, I'll cancel the tax and the insurance. You have your car. And then Sadiq Khan would have to find parking for a myriad of old cars outside of his Transport for London offices. So an absolutely genius way to get around the ULES thing by just registering it to the Mayor of London. Notwithstanding the fact that you don't own your car anyway, the document is just the registered keeper. So you can register it to Sadiq Khan and he will be the registered keeper whilst you still own the vehicle. I think that's absolutely brilliant because the registered keeper is responsible for all the stuff that arrives in the post. Generally, pre-2005 petrol and pre-September 2015 diesel vehicles are non-compliant, but we know that this isn't an exact science and it doesn't always make sense. Um, to meet the ULES emissions, your vehicle must meet the required Euro emission standard for the vehicle and emission type. Um, the requirements for meeting the ULES requirements are Euro 3 for motorbikes, mopeds, tricycles and quadricycles, Euro 4 for petrol, cars, vans, minibuses and specialist vehicles, or Euro 6 for diesel cars, vans, minibuses and other specialist vehicles. So if your car is non-compliant, just register it to Sadiq Khan because uh, I'm guessing it's not going to be worth all that much money anyway. So, you know, you could have some issues with repossession and whatnot, but I think this is a brilliant way to prove a point. A spokesman for the Mayor of London said the Mayor's been clear that the decision to expand the ULES zone was not an easy one, but necessary to tackle toxic air pollution and the climate crisis. In brackets, he was told to do so by his WEF puppet masters. Around 4,000 Londoners die prematurely each year due to air pollution. We already know that that figure is bollocks. Children are growing up with stunted lungs and thousands of people in our city are developing life-changing illnesses such as cancer, lung disease, dementia and asthma. We know that's bollocks as well because the most polluted place in London is the tube itself. Notwithstanding the fact that we're not looking at, I don't know, 
processed foods, diet, exercise, all that stuff that matters, but no, the car is to blame. In Redbridge, up to an estimated 142 people lose their lives prematurely each year due to toxic air pollution. That's balls, isn't it? I can guarantee you he can't back that up with science. We know that ULES works, he says, as it's already allowed more than 4 million people to breathe cleaner air in inner London, and harmful emissions have been cut by nearly half in central London. I think he's telling porky pies. The ULES is a very targeted scheme, he says. Yes, it specifically targets poorer people. Nine out of 10 cars driving in outer London are already ULES compliant, also bollocks, and will not have to pay the charge. For drivers of the most polluting vehicles, the mayor is delivering the biggest scrappage scheme yet, 110 million pound to help the Londoners who need it most, including charities, low income and disabled Londoners, micro businesses and sole traders. Brilliant. Register your car to Sadiq Khan because all of that is utter bollocks. For drivers of the most polluting vehicles, this is a man that drives around in an almost half million pound armoured Range Rover and will not engage with anyone when he's out and about. This man is an absolute scumbag who is going after people who drive old cars because he wants to remove your ability to drive around unless you can afford to buy a brand new vehicle. This is utter insanity and it must be stopped. And you may be thinking, yeah, Jeff, we haven't seen you make a video about the ULES scheme for some time. No, you haven't. Because I believe that the ULES expansion was just a ploy to introduce road user charging. I think they wanted us to protest. I think they wanted us to complain. It was a sort of red herring so that we'd go, ah, we don't want the ULES expansion. And they go, okay, we won't expand the ULES. We'll give you road charging instead. And within two years, for my drive to Cornwall, it'd be one pound a mile. And suddenly, you've got a lockdown that is in place because nobody can afford to go anywhere or drive the cars that they've been legislated out of. Good afternoon, sir. <laughs> you off on a test drive? Hey? You off on a test drive? No, I'm off on lunch. Oh, you're off on lunch? Yeah. Very good. Right, see you in a bit. I'm going now anyway. And that is the end of my video. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought. I thought that was a terrible video. Uh, I mean, I moved the car once. So I had to stop when the Women's Institute were talking about who's going to Switzerland and who's baking cakes and who's not. And then I got interrupted by Lyndon at the end. Absolutely classic Jeff Buys Cars chaos. I feel much better today than I did yesterday. Though. That's a good sign, isn't it? Jeff buys cars. Still, YouTube's most boring car and conspiracy and conversation channel.